Okay, so Griffiths Electrodynamics, um, problem 2.16. So we have a very long sort of a coaxial cable, um, basically infinite, and the inside is a solid cylinder of charge density rho, and the outside is sort of an infinitely, an infinitesimally thin shell of charge density just call it sigma, but um, what Griffith says is that the charge on the on the shell outside is there's the same amount of charge on the on the outside as there is on the inside, and they're opposite sign, so they cancel each other out. So basically, um, there's the same amount of charge on the outside as the inside. Total total charge is zero for the whole for the whole cable. Um, and uh, I believe we're going with uh, the inside to be positive. Um, so this is another Gauss's law problem. And um, so write out our little Gauss's law equation. Okay. So um, we need to find the electric field in three different regions, which is um, inside the inner cylinder and between the inner cylinder and the outer shell and then out here um, outside of the cable altogether. So, um, well, we're, we're just going to start with the inside. So, uh, this will be for uh, Griffiths uses S for the for the So this is just, like, that does not look very, it looks like it's coming straight out this way. I didn't draw that very well. Um, if I draw it out this way, that looks much more clear, right? Um, it, it's just uh, perpendicular to the axis of the cable. So it will tell you how far out from the center you are. All right, so we'll just ignore this one. All right. Um, all right, so, um, all right, more, more um, uh, terms. We have A for the inner diameter, or the, the radius of the inner cylinder, and for the radius of the outer shell, we have B. All right. Okay, so for the inside of the solid cylinder, we're dealing with an S less than A. Long story short. And um, so we're just going to do what we always do. We have, uh, we're just, we know by the symmetry of this, right? A very, very long cylinder, infinite. Um, because of that, there's um, a cylindrical symmetry and we, we won't have any component of the electric field that points along the length of the cable. So all of the electric field will just be coming either out or in, right, along the radial uh, direction, but none of it will, like it, it can't even be pointing a little bit to one side or the other. This won't work. Um, it will all be coming straight out. Um, all right, so uh, we know the direction. We're going to use Gauss's law to find the magnitude. So again, this is just finding the surface area of a cylinder, basically. So we have the magnitude of E, and then um, the um, the surface area of a cylinder is just the length, so we'll go ahead and write that in, and multiply it by 2 pi r, so the circumference, um, I guess 2 pi s in this case, um, because we're using s for the, for the radial distance. Okay, so now we have to find the 
charging closed. So we're still inside the solid, solid cylinder here in the middle. And uh, here's our little permittivity of free space. And so for charging closed, it's just row. Um, I'll turn this one into a row. Looks like a P. But. So there's a row. Uh, and then the volume of this same cylinder that we're that we found the surface area of. So the volume is going to be L and times uh, pi r squared pi s squared. Like that. Okay, so just the area of a circle multiplied by the length. Alright, so we, we see that the L's cancel out. So um, that's great. Um, this happens a lot end up talking about things per like charge per unit length things like that um, one of the s's is going to cancel out and oh, pi is going to cancel out so let's see what we have left over we have um, well this two is going to come on the bottom so we have a two epsilon naught on the bottom and we have one s and a row left Okay, and um, like we, we talked about before, all of this field, and again, we're, we're, we're calling the inside positive, so rho is positive, right? But even if it were, if, if there were a minus sign in rho, it would just change the direction, right? You could, you could take the absolute value of rho and bring out the minus sign, and it would, it would uh, cause the, the vectors to point in, because you'd have a minus sign of, of s hat. So when we make this a vector, we have s hat. Alright, okay, so that's the, the field inside this solid cylinder. Now if we go ahead and look at um, S, that is, it's going to be greater than A, but smaller than B. So here we are in between. Alright, so once we pass A, which is the radius of the solid cylinder, we're not picking up any more charge. So our left hand of this equation is going to be the same. I'll go ahead and put L in there still. All right, because our our little our Gaussian surface is still expanding in, in this case from A out to B as we're as we're kind of probing this space. Um, but once we once we're past A, the the amount of charge is not. Uh, the charge density multiplied by uh, the volume of our Gaussian surface is the charge density multiplied by just the volume of this inner cylinder, right? So we'll still have the row and we'll still have the epsilon naught. We'll still have the same length. Um, but now instead of pi s squared, which is the um, what we're using, what we were using for the volume of our Gaussian. Um, surface um, instead of pi s squared it's just going to be the volume of the inner cylinder so pi a squared okay so again this is going to be in the s hat direction and then we we can cancel the pi and the l um, Alright, so now on the bottom we have 2s, epsilon naught, and on the top we still have a row, and we have an a squared now, and this is in the s hat direction, so now we have our full on vector. Let me go ahead and write, draw little boxes around these. Hope that's all easy enough to read. Now, uh, for the third region, we are talking about um, being outside of the entire cable. All right. Um, so for our Gaussian surface, it's still the same. All right. So this is uh, s greater than b. Right. So Gaussian surface is still the same. Uh, two. 
two, or so we had an L, we had a two pi S, all right. Um, now, um, the part where this changes is when we have the enclosed charge, because Griffiths told us that we had uh, the sigma and the rho, once you, you count all the charge, the whole cable is electric, electrically neutral, right? So there's just as much positive charge on this inner cylinder as there is negative charge on the outer cylinder. All right, so once we get outside, once we cross this very, very thin shell, this tiny, that's a fine line, but once you cross it, um, you've just passed through this, um, this shell of opposite charge and it completely cancels out everything that's inside um, from, from the cylinder we talked about before. Basically, long story short, the inside charge is zero. Q um, enclosed here is zero. Long story short, right? So it doesn't matter what direction talking about now because um, the total charge enclosed is zero and uh, we get sort of the null vector for our uh, electric field. All right, completely zero. All right, so if we were to plot this, we have the strength of the electric field. So, um, and, and this is all in the S direction, right? And as we going out this this way okay um, right here we'll have a and here we'll have B all right so as we as we go back and look let me put a box around this so it's consistent if we go back and we look at this um, rows a constant two is a constant epsilon naught's a constant the only thing is s and it's just one power of s so it's just um, a linear increase. The S is getting bigger. Um, e is getting bigger. Some rate relative to S. Um, just a constant rate. Just linear, linear increase. Okay. So that's when we hit the outer, outer edge of our, of our inner cylinder. Now, um, now we're into this equation here. Rho is a constant, A is a constant, 2 is a constant, epsilon naught is a constant. We just have one power of S on the bottom, so we have an inverse, um, just, a, just a 1 over S type uh, curve. So just this uh, nice decrease here, right? And, um, okay. Now outside, we drop down to zero. So this is going to come straight down. Whenever you have a, a surface charge density sigma, that there's going to be a, uh, a discontinuity in the electric field. So, um, so this is what what our um, our electric field looks like as we as we go out. All right, just for fun, let's talk about. Um, that discontinuity. You can see my scratch work here. Um, but as we as we as we cross a uh, a sigma, you know, a uh, a uh, charge density, a surface charge. Um, as we said, the electric field is discontinuous, like right here. Um, and the the difference by which it's discontinuous is. The, the magnitude or the, the um, value for the charge density divided by epsilon naught. All right, um, so I'll just work this out real quick. So just to, um, because we know how much uh, delta E is from our equation, because outside we know that it's zero outside of for S greater than B, and just inside it's still followed by this. Um, equation. So at s equals b, we have a discontinuity of, um, so a row 
a squared over 2b epsilon naught. Okay, so this is our discontinuity. Again, just inside um, the outer cylinder, we have um, this row a squared 2b epsilon naught. And just outside, we have 0. So the total difference is just this. All right, so now if we, if we uh, solve for, uh, say, sigma, um, we just get the row a squared over 2b. Now, if we were to look at this the other way and just say, uh, based on our geometry and the, the charges canceling out, let's find sigma that way. Um, well, we know there's some total charge q, and that's going to be um, well, we'll just work with the magnitude. So um, the magnitude of Q is just the charge on either the shell on the outside or the cylinder on the inside. So if we look at the shell on the outside, um, that's sigma times 2 pi B. So this is the circumference of the outer shell. We're just finding the surface area of the shell and multiplying it by the surface charge density uh, times L. All right. Um, but opposite in sign, but equal in magnitude is the charge on the inner cylinder, which is rho times uh, pi a squared, which is the, the area of one of the ends multiplied by L. So here we have the volume of the inner cylinder multiplied by the volume density, the surface, the area of the outer shell multiplied by the, the area charge density. So volume charge density, area charge density. Um, and these two magnitudes are equal, even though they're opposite in sign to cancel out. All right, so this is equal to this. Um, all right, so if we cancel out a, an, um, if we just, all right, we'll just write this out. Sigma two. So the L's will cancel out, the pi's will cancel out, and we are left with, I'll write it right here, sigma, and then on the other side we have a row A squared, and then we're dividing by 2B on both sides. So we we'll see this matches this, and we end up with the same answer either way we look at it finding the electric field like we did in the problem and then uh, finding this uh, discontinuity um, as we cross the, the surface charge or as we use um, this charge balance that, that Griffiths has given us and we, and we find the total charge on the, inner on the inner cylinder and the total charge on the outer cylindrical shell, um, we get the same answer.